So the first two modeling assignments I had you do were kind of abstract. It was a block and a top hat. There was nothing really specific. In this case, what we want to do is we're going to try and recreate this ice cube tray you could see here. So um, the first thing I do when I go to model something is I, I take a good look at it, I kind of analyze it. So just looking at it, I can see that it has three rows deep and it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows across. I see that it has little thumb grips. There's a lip that kind of tapers out. The edges taper in. The edges have a, there's a little bit of thickness in between each of the receptacles. All right. So let's talk about how we're going to make that. I'm going to make my perspective view active. Let's go to plane, open keyboard entry, and let's give it a width of 100 and I'm sorry, length of 100 and a width of 500, or no, length of 100, width of 50, hit create. All right, here is a plane. Let's over around, take a look. I'm going to come up here to the little plus sign and turn off grid by clicking that show grids. There we go. All right, and that only does that per view. Let's make sure edge faces is on. So I'm going to come over here to modify and just turn all these off by setting the length and width to one for each of them. And now right click and convert to edit poly. All right, so in edge mode, I'm going to come in and click on an edge and then get ring because I want to get the edge on the opposite side. Let's make it a color that's not a warm color so it's easier to see our selections. There we go. And I'm going to open up Connect, and I want to set it to 2 because I want to have two rows going across. I'm going to click on one of the long edges and click Ring so I get all those selected. I'm going to open Connect, and I'm going to set it to 6 because if I do 6, it's going to give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is what was on the ice cube tray. All right. So let's start. Let's get a lip going in around the upper edge. So we're going to grab everything in Polygon here, but then we're going to hold Alt and deselect the corners because we want to have those thumb grips. And now we'll turn on Inset and we'll just set this to 2.5 and click OK. Now before we go further, let's take a look at this in the top. Interestingly enough, you see how the trays, they're not square anymore. So let's go in here into Vertex. I'm going to region select all of this row. Looks like I missed a bunch, so I'm going to grab those manually right here. And then I'm going to come to Edit Geometry. Because this is a left right here, let's try doing Edit Geometry. I'm going to find Make Planar and try and make it planar along X. That does a good job. Now it's a nice straight line. We're going to do the same thing here. Just try and grab all those in a row. Do X. And now I want to get these that are getting distorted. I'm going to do Y. Same thing. Grab all those and make them planar along Y. All right, so now we've kind of fixed them up. Although in the center, those are very oblong. So let's just region select, go into move, and just shift this over manually a little bit. There we go. If I go into element, and click on the model, I'm going to come down here to the bottom. I'm going to change the X value to zero to center it up again. But now I have, I have square receptacles. And that's what I was really going for. All right, let's go out. Let's restore our viewport. We'll take a look here. This blue seems a little bright. Sorry, let's go a little bit darker. All right, there we go. Let's see better. All right, so next step. We made our lip. We cleaned up the receptacles so that they're all lined up. I'm going to make sure I'm only on select because i got to manually go in and select some polygons. You can always go in and hold control. I like to hold control and do region selects. It goes a lot quicker. All right, I got all these guys selected. So I'm just going to extrude them, but I want to change my extrude value. I'm going to right click to make this viewport active. I'm going to change my extrude value to a negative 2.5. And then hit OK. It kind of pushes those in. All right, let's do a slight outline. We'll angle that in just a little bit. Nah, I actually don't want to because if I angle it in again, 
then I gotta go in and fix weird stuff getting distorted. I don't wanna deal with that at this point. So I'm just gonna extrude that down. And now I'm gonna do another inset, but this time I'm gonna change this inset from group to by polygon. And see what that does? It Every polygon out there is now getting extruded or inset. And so let's change the value to 0.5. Now let's do 0.75. Yeah, I think that's probably good. We'll click OK. Now we got that nice lip in between each of them. And they're all selected. If at any point you accidentally deselect something, you can go back in and just manually select them, or maybe if you're lucky, you can undo it. Right? Uh, for the most part, though, if you keep them all selected, you're able to just breeze right through this. All right, so we're going to go again, and we're going to extrude them down because we've got to give them the height. Let's drag that down. That looks to be about the right height for ice cubes. And click OK. Now, they don't come straight down. So again, we're going to go, and this time we're going to use this tool called Outline. Outline takes what you have, and it moves it in by a numeric amount. So we're getting all sorts of fun new options here. I think just negative one, the default will be okay. Let's zoom out. We can look at our ice cube tray again. I think that's probably good. Maybe go, let's go to move and move them up just a little bit. All right, so I've maximized my viewport. Let's go to display and turn on back face cull. Now, as we orbit, we notice that it is see-through. There's no back side, so let's fix that. Oh, before we even do that, we got to get a lip up here on the top, right? And there's an interesting way we're going to do this. We're going to go into border. Now, border allows you to click on any open edges, means there's no polygon connected to it. So if I click on the lip, if I orbit around here, you'll see that I actually have this whole entire upper lip selected. Now, there's a couple different things we could do. I, I find that if we have that selected, I'm going to click cap. And if we orbit around to the bottom, you see there's just one giant polygon out there. So I'm going to switch to polygon. I'm going to come over here to the side and click on it so I have that giant polygon from the base selected. All right. From where I just capped it off. And if I click extrude to extrude it, I actually want to get a positive extrude. I don't want it extruding up like this. I want to do like about like that. Give us a nice lip on it and click OK. And now I'm going to use outline again, but this time instead of having it come in on itself, I actually want it to go out and flare out a little bit. I'm going to click OK. And now, before we finish off, we do have this giant polygon out there and we're going to put a shell on everything. So we actually want to just make sure we select that one big polygon on the bottom and delete it. There we go. So now we got this. This is looking really good. To finish it off, we're just going to put a shell modifier on. And I'm going to leave the outer amount at zero, but I'm going to increase the inner amount to one. Let's see. That's pretty thick. We'll probably set that to like 0.25. There we go. And so now we've gone through and we've built an ice cube tray, right? And we've added a, a number of different tools into our uh, skill set that we can utilize and work with. So let's just call this Ice Cube Tray. Oops, get rid of the plain zero zero. All right, so go ahead and save this. Remember, last name, first initial. Uh, give me a snip of it, and you'll turn in the max file and the snip.